The Lady Raiders have been stirring things up in West Texas for some time now with back-to-back -back Southwest Conference titles. And this year, of course, they brought home Texas Tech's first national championship in any sport. We never thought about losing. We never said, oh my gosh, we can't do it. I, I think that's what got us through, is that it never entered our mind that we would get beat. They were the best team, and they, they figured out ways to get it done. I have to do what I'm capable of doing to win this game, um, not just for myself, but for my teammates and my family in the city of Lubbock. Rise up and seize the opportunity that was in front of us, and I really feel like that's what we did. That was some fun times. You know, I remember preseason workouts as being very businesslike. They had, they were conference champions. They wanted to repeat. Winning a conference championship my freshman year, uh, we expected to do that that year as well. They really were in tune with what they needed to do to be a really good team. It was always about the team. You know, what can the team do better? What does the team need to do? Every coach, every trainer, every athlete had a spot. And if they didn't do what they needed to every day, uh, we probably were not going to win. We were in this together. It wasn't one, it wasn't a few, it was, it was everybody together. Very um, driven to do some amazing things that year. What a drive down the lane by the senior, Krista Kirkland from Spearman. We knew we had a good basketball team. We knew that we were able to play at a high level. We knew how good Cheryl was. 48 points. We knew that we had a great supporting cast around her and that they really believed in our plan. Winners of 10 of 12 and ranked number 14 in the country, Texas Tech begins defense of their Southwest Conference title. We felt they were special. We really did. And uh, the, the thing that they had, they were such a great team. The teams with the most successes through the years were ones that where everybody was in it for the team. As we progressed, we realized, you know, this, this is a special team. We could actually do it. You know, we started to believe in ourselves. There's been better groups of kids put together, you know, maybe more athletic or more this or more that. But this was, without a question, one of the greatest teams ever put together. Their chemistry was so good, you know. Everybody knew their role. Everybody accepted their role. Every single person on that team was willing to accept their role. If Coach Sharp went to, to Stephanie and you know said, Steph, you gotta shut her down. I just wanted to play hard and um, whether I started or came off the bench, when I got out there, I wanted you know to make something happen. They were incredibly unselfish. I have never been around a group that was un as unselfish as that group was. Things just kept clicking in place and rolling and going. It, it wasn't a fluke. It wasn't something that was just gonna be over. It was gonna keep going. As they start down the stretch drive in the second half of the Southwest Conference schedule. As we progress each game, we started playing better and better. Marcus shot for Texas Tech has brought the Lady Raiders into the national spotlight. Players get it at that level, and they're able to perform together at that level because they have such a commitment to each other. Ranked ninth in the country, I think when you get to that point, uh, you get to a point to where you, you, you don't hope, and you don't hope the ball goes in. I think there was just a lot of you know, mental toughness and the will to win as much as anything. A win over the Lady Longhorns in Austin would be significant in its own right. We are not leaving the Frank Irvin Center um, defeated. The Lady Raiders are trying to do something they've never done, and that is beat Texas here in the Frank Irwin Center. Johnson gets to steal the basket. The Lady Raiders fans are going crazy. Our whole focus the whole year was to be conference champions. We wanted to beat Texas and be conference champions. You know, I think after this game tonight, there should be no doubt. The Raiders now know that they belong in the top 10, and they will never again have to take a back seat to Lady Longhorn basketball. Winning at Texas for the first time. I think that was when we knew we could do something very, very special. Yeah, it's when we beat the Longhorns. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's so on. It is so on. We can do this. We can do this. We can do this. That's when it kind of clicked. I think after that, we realized there really wasn't a whole lot we could not conquer. It never entered our minds that we could get beat. And I don't know that we realized we could win a national championship, but we never thought about getting beat. And the way we finished up the regular season, and conference play um, felt like we were peaking at the right time. Just two wins away from their second straight Southwest Conference title. At that point, we were just like, I don't think we're going to get beat again. You know, we just know in, in our minds, you know, that we're on a mission and that, that we're not going to let anybody get in our way. Those kids felt that they could do anything. We are so focused and so confident that the Final Four is not out of reach for us at all, and we want to get there and 
I think that that's the only thing that can make this season totally outstanding in my mind. I'm going to I'm going to remember everything that's happened to me at Tech, but um, to finish it off like that would would be great. Swoops was ready, and all the other players, Krista, Noel, and Stephanie, were ready to do whatever they had to do in order to make it happen. We're going to go do something great together. I thought what she did was absolutely amazing, not only for Texas Tech, not only for Lubbock, but for women's basketball everywhere. That by God, if you want to win and get it done and beat the giant, you can do it. From the time I was blessed enough to become a coach at Texas Tech, I had uh, visions of us doing great things. She didn't want to just continue to be average or continue to be good. You know, she wanted to do something great. We were surrounded by such great high school basketball and there was a great junior college conference that was around us. And I felt like that, you know, you had an opportunity to put great players in the program. Tradition of women's and girls basketball down there. These pure shooters here are not just developed in college. And so they come to Coach Sharp uh, well versed in the fundamentals. And you're seeing that, you're seeing that. Girls playing basketball out in West Texas spending summers in the gym. You know, we had such a similar experience in that. Things just came together, and, um, and like they always did, because Coach Sharp had a very unique way of getting everybody to blend together, to play together, to be on the same page, as she always said. That was such an easy group to coach, because they wanted the best thing for the team. I'm just gonna do what Coach Sharp needs me to do, and if it's, if it's to play defense, I'll play defense. They understood that if you can do this for this team, I think we have a chance to win. And they believed that. They believed in me. What is there a greater honor for a coach than for those kids you're coaching to believe in you? To believe what you're telling them gives them a chance to be great. That's all you ever want. But Marcia Sharp has a system, and her kids play that system to a T. The way we played is the way she coached. Whatever Coach Sharp told us to do, we were going to do it. We would run through the wall. Marcia Sharp is looking like a genius right now. Could take what we had and and make it that much better. They just took this program and took it to an entirely different level that it was such a special thing for me to be a part of them. One of her very good characteristics was to bring everybody together, no matter background or, or what. And, you know, she recruited people that knew that would be a good piece to a puzzle that she was putting together. Taking different personalities and putting them together. A lot of different personalities on that team. So many different personalities. Yo, VIP, listen up. This is dedicated to all the Lady Raiders out there. Here we go now. Ice, Ice Raiders. Ice, Ice Raiders. Yo, stop. I learned a lot from her about not just the game itself, but, but about the people. She has the knack of pulling out the best in people. Marcia Sharp, and these kids love playing for her. Her assistants love working with her. Uh, Coach Sharp opened up the doors and said, you get to be a part of this. You know, it completely changed my life forever. You know, she just did so much for all of us. She's a friend for life. When she tells you she's there for you, she's going to be there for you. Coach Sharp is an amazing woman. She's just a very special lady, and, and I think relationships is what made her very unique as a coach, is that she really cared about her players, and I think it's evident 20 years down the road. This was a woman who was concerned, just as I am, about my future and my contribute, contributory aspect to this world without an orange ball through a hoop. If you put your three people on your pedestals, you know, in your life, of these are my three people that I look to and, and trust wholeheartedly, and um, she definitely was one of those for me. Outside of my parents, and I mean this with every ounce of me, I love her to death. There has not been a more beneficial or important person in my life, simply because, you know what, that's how much she loves us, and I guarantee you she does. The relationship that we still have and, and still want to have and, and to be able to nourish it and, and help it flourish is something that, um, that I have learned from her that, that I hope that I can continue to do um, as we move forward. She's just a phone call away. You know, I can pick the phone up and call her and, you know, talk to her about whatever's going on. It's just nice to know that we still have home away from home when it comes to Coach Sharp. Just on, on every level, there's so much respect I have for her. Not just for what she's done um, on the court as a basketball coach, not just what she's done for the city of Lubbock, but what she's meant to women's basketball. 
She's been just a, a consummate leader along the way, uh, you know, whether it was while she was being a basketball coach or building academic buildings that, that our students have had now to, to use to, to hire their education. So she really always had probably a higher purpose in everything that she did and a way that she did it. What she taught me um, was a lot more than, than basketball. She taught me how to be the best person that I could possibly be both on and off the court. Women's Championship game between the Lady Longhorns of the University of Texas and the Lady Red Raiders of Texas Tech University. The atmosphere was electric when Stephanie Scott opened Tech scoring with the three reunion arena nearly exploded. But it was Texas who set the early pace. Vicki Hall, 12 early points. Texas forged a 26-11 lead. Texas played great. First 12, 14 minutes. I mean, they played great. And they made shots and they, they did everything perfect. Timeout with a 15 point Lady Longhorn lead. And, um, you know, we had a timeout, and I remember Coach Wee saying that when the players came to the bench, and I told them, We're okay. You know, we're going to be okay. You're taking good shots, and we're going to be okay. I mean, it was right here now. And she said, Hey, we're all right. All right. <laughs> I don't think she's doing the math right here. But. And they all looked at me like I was crazy. My assistants, they were like, well, she doesn't, she's not reading the scoreboard well. And Coach Sharp called that timeout, and, you know, she was telling me it's okay, and then she told all of us that our shots were going to, you know, they were going to come. Overhaul, swoops. The All-American is turning it on and leading a comeback. I really felt that way because I felt like we, you know, had the capability of coming back. A three by Miss America, Cheryl Swoops. I think she captured the heart of America, and there are some athletes that do that. I think Michael Jordan did it on the men's side, and Cheryl did it on the women's side. Here's Cheryl Jordan. I mean, Michael well, Swoops. Yes. <laughs> it's definitely always been a goal of mine to be the absolute best I can be, and you know, to try to take not only my game but my teammates um, to the ultimate level. Now the dump pass in with Hall on her defensively doesn't help. Cheryl Swoops. 29. Uh, there was nobody uh, like her, and really I haven't seen anybody like her since. The finesse she played with and the intensity, and it was amazing to watch. Ball. Swoops has it low over Kennedy. Got it. Foul. 31 for Swoops. And a, free throw. a great Texas team. I mean, they were stacked that year, too. Then when you see something like that, you realize this is, this is on a whole different level. The only question left is how much will she break the all-time Southwest Conference tournament scoring record? The pressure the ability, the basketball IQ, you know, all of those different things. There's very few that can put the whole puzzle together, and she figured out how to put it all together. Spin move, drawing contact, no foul, basket counts anyway. Swoops, 34. Oh, I just can't imagine, I mean, I just can't fathom just how great a player she was and that she put women's basketball on the map herself. Um, and, and our team that year helped her do that. There's just not enough words you can describe what Cheryl Swoops means to Tech and to women's basketball. And it was fun to, to watch her grow and um, develop her game and really take all of us to a different level. To the baseline, Swoops stock pop. She has now tied the Southwest Conference Championship game scoring record. With to me, it was always bigger than me. It was about my team. Swoops baseline gets around the key. Sinitra, 43 points for Cheryl Swoops, and her team leads by three. Role model. A mentor, she knew what to say, how to say it, when to say it, when to be nice, when to toughen up, and she was just amazing as a leader. We just feel like her little fans. We just, she's just sure, we're your biggest little fans. I know, we are. Freshmen we really are. Send me money when you go to your <laughs> And in retrospect, I simply had a chance to get on the court with one of the best to ever play. And that's amazing. I think she's the best player of her generation. And I think you can say that because of what she did in big moments, that she carried whatever team she was with to a championship at whatever level she was playing. Cheryl Swoop, as far as I'm concerned, the greatest player that's ever played this game. She was an incredible talent and probably the best woman to have ever played women's basketball, in my opinion. Swoop with 51 points has not only broken her own Southwest Conference single game scoring record for the all time, of course the tournament records go, but the reunion arena record is gone to Cheryl Swoop. She was phenomenal and unbelievable player, and I just think that we, we all just had that chemistry and respect for one another, and 
we were all on the same page when it came to what we wanted to accomplish for not only our team, but for our university and for our community. The final score, Texas Tech Lady Red Raiders, the Southwest Conference champions, 78. Texas 71. And the Texas Tech Lady Raiders are celebrating here for the second year in a row. There was no other team I would have wanted to be on, um, no other teammates that I wanted to play with. You know, we got there together. She's a very, very special player, and uh, there are not going to be many of them come around in any program in this country. And we were just so blessed to have her at Texas Tech. Sharps, the Lady Raiders have won over the Washington Lady Huskies, 70-64. Marcia, it was a battle start to finish. Our kids battled all day long, and we talked about the first one that blinks usually is going to be the one that loses, and uh, uh, some great fan told me that this week, and I think it held true today. Really excited about playing in the NC2A tournament, and um, you know, had had a little bit of success before in it, and, and we were excited to have the opportunity to go. The Lady Raiders ranked fifth in the country, and they are headed for Missoula, Montana. Nine to two, Texas Tech. Down the middle goes Kirkland, laid up and in. The senior from Spearman, Texas, has four, and Tech has its biggest lead. I think that the sky's the limit right now, and that we are so excited and, and on such a roll and have so much momentum that um, we're not going to be denied. Inside, Kirkland got it. And she'll shoot to complete a three-point play. I think at that point, we completely shifted our focus, and it was sort of like, let's see what we can do. They really have what it takes. Oh, to there's win no a question. There is absolutely no question. And that's and, a big reason why. And that's a huge reason why. Coach Sharp did something right in preparing us. She did something right in getting our minds right because when we got into the tournament, it was like a brand new season. We were like, okay, here we go. You know what they've taught you, you know what you need to do. Now just go out there, execute, and perform. And look at the inside strength of Micah Atkins. I've always said this, when you're trying to win a national championship, you have to be very good, you have to be very lucky, and you have to be hot at the right time. And we were all of those things. Texas Tech is going to the final four. There's your superstar, 36 points for that young lady, Cheryl Swoops. I always thought that the national player of the year should go to the final four. And I'm really glad she's getting a chance to. <laughs> Not me. <laughs> About two weeks ago, our goal was to go to the Final Four. About uh, 10 o'clock Saturday night, that changed. Our goal is to win the Final Four. Yeah! Our fans, second to none, second to none. And uh, they love those kids, and those kids love them. Y'all have made this season worthwhile, especially for us some seniors. Um, you know, we couldn't go out in better style, but we're not finished yet. We're going to go to Atlanta, and we're going to try our hardest to bring the national title back to you. Yeah! You know, we were all happy to advance to the final four but i don't think any of us were satisfied but we're not there yet you know we're not satisfied and we're going to win it even going into the final four and playing vanderbilt in the first round and we were certainly the underdogs in that game vandy been ranked one most of the year and, and no one really gave us much of a chance to beat them i think we did a good job in the tournament of taking it one game at a time and that was the only thing we focused on we just looked forward we we had blinders on and, and went into that first game against vanderbilt we had followed the game plan to a tee and had success. Alone underneath, Scott, a good feed from Johnson. Noel Johnson to Stephanie Scott. Rebound by Swoops. Swoops dribbles it out and finds room for the basket. Swoops, Scott, good feed for Klinger. As well, in just a few hours, we will have a new national champion for Texas Tech. This would be the first and only national championship in any sport ever won by the school. You get one more W, and quite frankly, that'll be the last game we play, because that is it. We'd always write our goals on, for the game on the, on the board and uh, before, before the game. And we'd go in, the kids did it for the final ball game. There was one thing written on the board that day in Atlanta, and it was win in big letters right in the middle of the board, and that's all it said. Seeing it on the board, and it was just like, just win the whole thing. That's the only goal we need to have for that game. And the buzzer sounded, and, and it was tip-off time. You know, that was showtime for me. Swoops gets it right now for the Raiders, and she hits. That sound you hear is, ooh, for Swoops. Swoops for three. Now there's a relaxed, easy shot. She's a relaxed, easy player. That point, at that time, 
It doesn't matter if it's pretty, if it's ugly, if you reach your goals, if you don't, the, the ultimate goal is just win and find a way. And that was Coach Sharp's theory. There's gonna be obstacles. There's gonna be a ton of reasons not to do it. Find just one. He really picked it up. A steal by Scott. It's hard to comprehend the enormity of this one basketball game. 40 minutes to forever put the Lady Raiders in the history books. It was gonna be something that forever we were gonna remember sharing with each other. So happy. I don't, you know, there have been very few days in my life that I remember feeling that happy, and we were all just so, that's unbelievable. Oh, uh, God. It's unbelievable. I just remember, you know, hugging my dad and just crying um, and my mom and everything because it was just a, all they ever wanted for me was to experience something like that. Those friendships that were um, formed through that basketball team are very precious and it's something that we always have to share together. No one can take that away from us enthusiasm, the unity, I'm like, whoa. And then to come into Jones Stadium, my eyes lit up like, oh my gosh. And you just hear the roar, and you see those motorcycle cops lined up. They park their motorcycles, and we roll out onto the turf, and it's just, it's a deafening noise. Honestly, I've never experienced anything like that. I'm getting chills. I got chill bumps. That was pretty amazing. I will never forget that. This is what we've done. This is what we've accomplished. This is huge. It's probably one of the most exciting moments of my life. It's just that cool.